most amusement parks are built to last. People and corporations spend millions of dollars every year to make sure they're successful and they have a good return on their investment. But what if I told you that some amusement parks were actually designed to be lost in the first place? Would you believe me? Probably not. Well then, join us as we rediscover and track down the remaining pieces of the 1915 Pan Pacific Exposition. It might have been a century ago, but there's still plenty of pieces of it around to experience in and around the city by the bay. everyone and welcome to the Lost Parks of Northern California. My name is Chris Roberry and today's park that we're featuring is, well, a little bit different from the ones we've done before, mostly because it was designed to be lost from the get-go. You could call it a lost park on purpose. Now to properly tell the story of the 1915 Pan Pacific Exposition, we have to go back a few years, all the way to the early morning hours of April 18th, 1906. At 5.12 that morning, the nearby San Andreas Fault ruptured, sending an immense 7.8 magnitude earthquake to the Bay Area. As if that wasn't enough, the quake broke numerous underground gas lines in San Francisco, which subsequently caught fire. The city would burn for four days and four nights before it finally snuffed itself out. When it was all over, 80% of San Francisco was left in ruins. But if there's one thing you should know about San Franciscans, it's that they're a very resilient bunch. Within a few years, most of the city was completely rebuilt, and the charred ruins of the city were dumped into the bay, creating new, reclaimed land. After the completion of the Panama Canal in 1914, San Francisco was ready to celebrate the economic boom it was about to bring the city, in addition to rising from the ashes of the 1906 earthquake. And so the folks in charge thought, hmm, why not let the whole world join in? So they did. Construction soon began on the World's Fair site, on newly reclaimed land just west of Fort Mason. You know it today as the Marina District, because it was just that before, a marina. The fair officially opened to the public on February 20th, 1915, to raucous reviews. 1915 San Francisco, certainly we'll make things Like the state fairs held in Sacramento today, this fair was much more than just rides. It was a collection of exhibits and pavilions from countries around the world, celebrating the advancements and achievements of a society on the move. Countries as far as Japan were represented here, and that's no small feat in the pre-airline era. Some of the most notable attractions included a music pavilion with the world's seventh largest pipe organ, a working scale model of the newly built Panama Canal, and the ubiquitous Palace of Fine Arts, dedicated to performance and culture. There was even a one-third scale miniature steam railway, which ran along the entire length here of what is now Marina Boulevard. But the most striking feature of the park was the aptly named Tower of Jewels, a 435 foot tall leviathan that greeted visitors as they entered the fair. It was covered in over 100,000 Nova Gems, or cut glass jewels, that sparkled both in the day 
and at night. And what would a fair be without some rides? Those were all located in the zone. Sadly, fellow coaster fans, we missed out on three credits, a racing coaster as well as a scenic railway. The zone featured several other attractions, including a traditional carousel and a ride dubbed Bulls of Joy. It actually was shut down due to safety reasons. Now, my question to you is this, what the hell did this ride do to people that shut it down in 1915 for safety reasons? I mean, this is an era when rides that killed people had longer lines. The zone's most notable attraction, however, was a Joseph Strauss designed Aeroscope, a 265 foot tall moving observatory that took up to 118 passengers at a time up for the ride of their lives. The counterweight alone weighed 370 tons. Today, a century later, amusement park fans know this type of ride under a much different name, the Intamin-designed Flying Island. Pretty amazing to think the idea for this ride is actually a century old. If the steel lattice work behind me looks familiar, you're absolutely right. Joseph Strauss, the man who designed the aeroscope, would later go on to develop another amazing piece of history here in San Francisco that's still around today. You know it as the Golden Gate Bridge. Now, all good things must come to an end, and that includes a World's Fair. Unlike other World's Fairs, however, San Francisco has made a profit. So being nearly a century ago, there can't possibly be anything left from this fair here, right? Well, not exactly. Let's start with the original fair site. Since the streets haven't changed in San Francisco, it's still possible to walk the exposition grounds. The border is essentially Van Ness, Marina, Richardson, and Chestnut, with some portions of Lombard. The main entrance to the fairgrounds was located here, the corner of Scott and Chestnut, and I hear if you squint just right, you may actually be able to still see the Tower of Jewels. Now, the most visible and recognizable piece from the 1915 Pan Pacific Exposition is this colossal structure, the Palace of Fine Arts. But did you know, it's actually not the original. While the organizers of the fair intended for the exposition grounds to be left in ruins, as all great cities had ruins, San Franciscans came to love the Palace of Fine Arts and fought tooth and nail to save it. The structure you see today is actually an exact replica copied by taking plaster molds of the original. This modern version was completed in the 1960s, when the original was literally falling apart at the seams. Can't really expect much for a temporary structure though, can you? And if you're looking to make a foodie connection to the fair, and you know who you are, just come about 20 miles south of the Palace of Fine Arts and the fairgrounds to Belmont, California, where you'll find the Vans restaurant. Now, if you look at the architecture and say, well, Chris, that doesn't look like an American steakhouse. Well, you're absolutely right, because this is the actual tea house from the World's Fair in 1915. Seriously. Told ya. After the fair ended in 1916, the Japanese tea house was barged down San Francisco Bay and then dragged up this really steep hill where it overlooks Belmont today. Now, the Vans wasn't always a restaurant while it was up here. It doubled as a hotel and even a brothel for some time. But thankfully, those times are past and now it's offering amazing quality food with views to kill.
but arguably the saddest piece left over from the 1915 World's Fair doesn't live above ground. In fact, it lies right below where I'm standing here. It's been hidden from public eye, and more importantly, public ear, for nearly 20 years. Because under Civic Center Plaza, here in Brooks Hall, lies the 40-ton exposition organ. Everything you see around me is the instrument, the exact same organ that thrilled thousands every day at the 1915 World's Fair. Literally 7,500 different individual pipes and voices. The pipes all vary in size, from that of a pencil, all the way to ones that you can actually stand on and in fact climb through. And they all of course had different notes as well. I I'm honestly speechless. It this is our history and it's literally sitting here in a box with thousands of its other's friends. Ironically, it was an earthquake, the very thing that gave life to the 1915 exposition, and by virtue, this organ, that initially silenced this instrument. After the fair, the city built the Civic Auditorium specifically to receive the organ, where it played on and off until about October 17th, 1989. That's when the walls of plaster fell onto it during the Loma Prieta earthquake. After the earthquake, the organ was taken out of the Civic Center to be restored. Unfortunately, a few years later, a mysterious stop work order was sent to the company, and the organ was ordered shipped back to San Francisco 95% restored. However, nobody wanted to put it back into the Civic Center, so it just ended up here. My name is Vic Ferrer. I am a producer in San Francisco and also one of the co-founders of Friends of the Exposition Organ. The San Francisco Exposition Organ is one of the last remaining vestiges from the Panama Pacific International Exposition of 1915. This instrument of heroic scale is really something that is very special to the city and the citizens of San Francisco as it was a gift uh, uh, from the founders of the uh, World Fair and uh, it's something that we need to bring back to the citizens. Pipe organs have a bad rap as being something about weddings, funerals, dirges, and Dracula. And unfortunately, that is an uphill battle for us who love great, beautiful classical music. And instruments such as, th as this have really, um, all over the country, been faced with the challenge of being heard and used again. And uh, there are many groups like ours who are trying to turn that around. Friends of the Exposition Organ is a citizens group that's been founded to find a home for this great uh, work of art. And we hope to keep the instrument in San Francisco and bring it back to the citizens for public enjoyment. You know, we're, we're increasingly concerned that historic artifacts and, and, and history is becoming something that you only read about in books and look at in photographs. And something like this is something you can experience in person. It's a real thing. History should not only be experienced as photographs and books it, and text in the book. It should be experienced firsthand by people in a real environment. And so, this magnificent musical instrument, a gift to the people of San Francisco, just sits here, waiting to find a new home. You know, for a city that loves its history and loves the arts, it's done a fine job of burying both, literally. Wow, I mean, just humbling, sad, all at the same time. Now you know we're not going to end a Lost Parks episode on that sour note. There's still two different ways that you can experience the 1915 Pan Pacific Exposition. But how, Chris, and where? How about Los Gatos and Davenport? An hour's drive south of San Francisco, Oak Meadow Park boasts not one, but two of the original attractions from the World's Fair. The carousel, which was actually part of the zone, and these train cars, which ran on the marina as part of the Overland Miniature Railway. Hey, are you guys excited to ride? Yeah! I love my job. So 
Billy Jones was a railroad man his entire life. He was an engineer for Southern Pacific, and he discovered the number two locomotive just in a warehouse ready to be shipped off to Japan, decided to buy it and put it on his own land. He ran the train free of charge, ran only on donations for many years, and even Walt Disney came by and invited him to run the Disneyland Railroad when he found out that he had a railroad up here in Northern California. So to think we're actually riding on the exact same cars as our great grandparents would have at the 1915 World's Fair, it's just mind blowing. And to think it's here in Los Gatos of all places. After the World's Fair ended in 1916, the carousel actually had a second life. It became a traveling circus ride for many years until it was abandoned in a warehouse on the peninsula. Amazingly, W.E. Bill Mason discovered it, brought it here to Oak Meadow Park in Vesona, and decided to restore it. As you can see, much to the light of children of all ages. What can I say? We love our carousels here on Lost Parks. You know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Working on Lost Parks is really hard work. Not. As for the locomotives that took those cars up and down Marina Boulevard, well, they're still with us too, here at the Swanton Pacific Railroad in Davenport. Railroad was a gift of Al Smith, who's the founder of Orchard Supply Hardware. So the next time you see those calendars with all the trains on them in Orchard, now you know why tools aren't featured and trains are. Just think, we're being pushed by the same locomotive that took people to the Pan Pacific Exposition in 1915. That's awesome.
only takes a tiny corner of this great big world to make a place you love. My home upon the hill, I find I love you still. I've been away, but now I'm back to tell you. San Francisco, open your golden gate. You let those stranger wait outside your door. San Francisco, here is your wandering one, saying I'll wander no more. Other places only make me love you best. Tell me you're the heart of all. A century ago, yet alive and well. Not too shabby for an amusement park that was designed to be lost in the first place, wouldn't you say? Join us next time as we explore another lost amusement park here in Northern California and reclaim our amusement heritage. I'm Chris Roberry. We'll see you next time. at the Swanton Pacific Railroad. Row, row. I'm gonna read this now and make sure I get this right. That would have been, that's gonna be great footage. Fun fact, that's not water. Holy crap. Hey Robert. What? I have a question for you. What is that? You know, all those postcards of the Golden Gate Bridge? Yeah. It shows it's like crystal clear and beautiful. Yeah. What the hell? Foggy as hell. It's always foggy as hell! The ride was shut down in 1915 due to health and damn it, it's not gonna sound good. There's this pigeon coming after me. Hoo -hoo. Hoo -hoo. That's awesome.